Welcome to part five of my video series on the return of Digby after 20 years. That's right, this car I owned 20 years ago, fixed it up, sold it, and it recently came back to my shop. The owner had been told the engine was dying or dead and that she needed to get rid of it, so she sent it my way. So I was really surprised, as you saw in part one, that this was the same car that I'd owned 20 years ago. But we're back at it till we've got our sleeves rolled up. You'll recall in the last part in this series, I said there were going to be two more things that we're going to do here. Now, the engine's running pretty well at speed, but it's still got that rough idle, and we narrowed it down to a definite miss on cylinder number three. So what I want to do in this video is corroborate. We're not talking about collaborate. We're talking about corroborate whether or not it's a fuel injector or it's compression. So the first thing I'm going to do is corroborate the fuel injector. Now, this is something that's really important when you're troubleshooting engines. It doesn't matter what kind of engine. Don't assume anything, particularly if you're replacing parts. And you say, well, I bought this brand new starter at the parts store and it still won't turn over. Well, don't assume that the starter is okay. You may need to corroborate the part and verify whether it's good or bad. So what I'm going to do here now is I assume that the fuel injector I put in number three is okay because you know it's out of my part stock that I recently tested six months ago, but I cannot corroborate it just by an assumption. Now that's very important anytime you're doing any kind of troubleshooting. Mark my word, do not assume anything, particularly when it comes to the condition of parts. Also, I can't assume, because the compression is at 220 PSI, that the piston is bad or the cylinder is bad. Okay, I can't assume that yet, because I have not corroborated it. I hope you're following me. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to corroborate the fuel injector to make sure that's okay, and then we're going to do one more thing to verify that indeed the compression is weak on that cylinder. And then we're going to make a decision. What do we do with Digby? Now I thought as an experiment I would do something this morning. Now it wasn't that cold last night, maybe 60 degrees. The car has sat all night. It has not started. And I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to turn it over without even pre-glowing it. I'm just going to get in the car, turn the key, and let's see how quickly the engine starts. Now this is just another small indication that you, you can use to determine the health of your engine. You know, if you get in on a reasonably cold morning, like 50 degrees, and you get in the car and just turn the key and it cranks over about five times and fires up, you have pretty good compression, I can guarantee it. And so is the case with my Blue 300D that's in the shop. I may uh, use that car later on as a demonstration. But let's see right now what Digby will do on a cold start. And that may tell us a little more about the internal health of the engine. Okay, obviously it cranked over long enough for those glow plugs to start heat up. But you can see now we're missing on two cylinders because those glow plugs didn't get hot. So we know we've got a couple cylinders in this engine that are very strong. Let's run it up a little bit. Good to smooth out. So you can see we still have a definite miss. Now let me explain how I'm going to corroborate the condition of the fuel injector. Here's fuel injector number three. This is a cylinder that has a definite miss. So once again, we crack the injector line, release pressure. There's no change in sound. So this is a different miss here. But you also recall in one of the previous videos that I had a really good drop in RPM when I loosened up the injector line nut on number two. So I know that this injector is working properly. I'm not so sure about this one. I bench tested it, but I can't assume that it's okay at idle. So how do I verify or how do I corroborate? It's very simple. I'm going to take number two here and I'm gonna put in number three, and then I'm gonna take number three injector and put in number two cylinder. If we start it up and it still misses, but this is the one that is not losing RPM when I loosen it, then we know that the fuel injector is bad. But if there's no change, then we have to move on to the next step in our troubleshooting. 
So I've swapped these two fuel injectors. It was really quite easy because I didn't bother to change the heat shield crush washers or even the hose. You know, it's really handy once again to have that tool to get those hoses on and off. But I did cut them back about a quarter of an inch and shove them back on there. If we're successful with this engine, we'll come back and probably replace the other three injectors and really clean everything up with all new uh, fuel return hoses. But, but this is done. They're in. They're torqued. The lines are on. I'm going to fire it up, and then I'm going to get the 17 millimeter wrench, and we're going to crack the nuts on number two and three and see if there's any difference. Well, the engine still sounds the same. It's obviously missing on one cylinder. So let's go ahead and loosen up number two. Oh, man. Now I'll loosen up number three. Look at that, no change. It's still doing the same thing. Even with a known good fuel injector, in number three, it's still not firing. So I've corroborated the fact that it's not a fuel injector problem. Now we're gonna pull Digby into the shop and we're gonna corroborate the compression. I know some of you are laughing, saying, Ken, why do you keep using that word? Why don't you just use the word to verify, which that's kind of what it means. But I'm using that word to prove a point, to emphasize the importance of what I'm trying to explain here. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the valve cover and inspect the rocker arm and the cam lobe on number three to make sure that the valves are opening and closing properly. Then I'm going to get my trusty wrenches here and adjust the valves. Now I'll know right away on number three if the valves are tight and there's no clearance that may be a pretty good indication uh, why we've got a loss of compression, but if the valve clearances are okay and the cam lobe looks okay, then, oh boy, I don't think we found the problems. I'm kind of excited to get that valve cover off, and what I've done is I've got the battery charger on the battery because once I complete the valve adjustment, we're gonna redo the compression test on number three, and we're gonna redo it properly to try to determine why that compression is low if we indeed don't find a problem with the valves. Well, Drew and I have been working our way down this camshaft, adjusting the valves. We've already adjusted the exhaust valve in number three, and it was slightly loose. It was about 15,000. We set that at 12. Now we have the intake valve up, I'm going to check it. All right, I got my 4,000 feeler gauge. It's loose. Let's see what it is. I got two and five. That's seven. So it's right around five or six thousandths. We're going to tighten that up. We're going to complete the valve adjustment. All the cam lobes look fine. This is kind of disheartening because I was kind of hoping it would be a valve adjustment problem, but it doesn't look like it's going to be. In review here, all the valves were loose. Some as much as five to seven thousandths of an inch, but there were no tight valves. Now the engine probably run a little bit better, but I'm positive that valve adjustment is not an issue with number three here. So what I'm going to do now is pull number three fuel injector and we're going to set up uh, the compression tester and we're going to do a detailed compression test just on number three. All right, let's cross our fingers. Compression tester is hooked up on number three. Jerson, go ahead and turn it over. Wow, that's not very impressive. I've often said if it drops much below 200, you've got a problem. So we definitely have a problem here. You know, the mechanic may have been correct when he told the owner that there was a bad piston. It could very well be the case. What we're going to do now is to determine whether it's a leaking valve or bad rings and piston. We're going to put a little oil in the cylinder and retake the test. Oh, 160, 170. That's all you get? Yep. Wow. Now, that makes sense because it runs okay once you get going, but once you drop off to idle, it just misses totally. Doesn't even fire at idle. Not even fire. But you get out on the road, it'll go 60 like crazy. 
in the mighty imagine, oil trick. Imagine if you just jump off with another hundred pounds. Of that thing That's all you need is another hundred pounds. <laughs> If you get another hundred, you'll be okay. You'll be okay, you know, yeah, it's just, just enough to keep it. There. Well, now I get to give it a dose of my favorite snake oil. This is Liquamoly high mileage oil for diesels and gas engines. It is part synthetic, and it also has a very high molybdenum content for anti-friction. So I recommend putting about two ounces down in to the pre-chamber, and then we're gonna let it sit for about 30 minutes. Just let that drain through the pre-chamber, get on top the piston. Okay, I'll come back in about 30 minutes and we'll hook up that compression tester and give it another try. Okay, I've let it sit for about 45 minutes, but I want to make sure we don't get a hydraulic lock. I think we can blow the excess out of here. I'm going to hold this rag over that adapter and go ahead and turn it over, Jerson, just once. Again. Okay, hold it. Okay, go ahead and turn it over. Okay, hold it. Look at that. 400 PSI. That's what it should be. So that's giving us a pretty good indication wow, that this is that. piston rings. All right. Well, look at that. It's still reading 400 PSI. Now that's what I call excellent compression. Not only did it reach 400 PSI, but it came up fairly quickly in five or six compression cycles. So this is kind of what you're looking for. This is ideal. Uh, be sure and check out the information on my website as I talk about how to interpret different compression settings for your own diesel. So look at this. I have corroborated the original mechanics findings that the engine had a bad piston. Now, we don't know for sure if it's a piston or piston rings, but it's piston, piston ring, cylinder wall related. We have weak compression. It came up to 400 PSI once we put oil down there because that helped to seal the rings. So we have an issue that is very, very hard to fix. I get this all the time. People say, Kent, what am I going to do? I got low compression one cylinder. How do I fix it? Well, you can't just fix one cylinder. You end up having to take the whole engine apart and rebuild it. And that's a very expensive proposition. So what I'm going to do now, I thought maybe this would be the last part in this series, but I'm not ready to give up yet. I'm going to turn to alternative medicine. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn to alternative medicine. And in the next part in this series, I'm going to explain what I mean by that.